It took a bit over a month of an ever-evolving adventure. First, after hauling out, we realized that the stern tube crack was a bit more substantial than we thought. With the engine out, we found even more surprises, and as we went on, we seemed to be digging ourselves into a deeper and deeper hole. But somehow, we persevered, and after many layers of fiberglass, all the repairs were done, including a brand new bilge box. It was time to answer the big question. Can we reattach the keel? We used the backing plates to secure a heavy-duty belt to the keel for the forklift to use as a handle. I will explain later what was the idea behind the masking tape, but let's just say it wasn't the brightest one. While Bartek secured the belt, the marina crew was prepping the new cradle. This time, it was super solid. The keel went up along with my heart rate. Jak nie dostanę z zawału w trakcie tej operacji, to After the keel was placed between the huge concrete slabs and the transport setup was removed, it was time to move Oish. Belts went up and she was airborne once again. So far, so good. Until we realized we have an alignment problem due to the new neighbor that was parked literally the day before. No big deal, just a bit of maneuvering around. Uh, everything is on the boat. The keel lifting setup was reattached and then absolutely nothing happened. Turns out the smaller forklift doesn't have enough oomph to lift the keel, much less the concrete slabs. But after a quick heavy machinery swap, everything was rearranged and it was time for the kill again.
that looks much better. Finally, the last piece of alignment, placing Oish over the keel. The tricky part of the whole procedure was that we not only needed to land on the keel, we needed to do it twice. The first time with epoxy paste between the keel and the hull to make them adhere to each other as perfectly as possible. Hence the blue tape soaked with oil that was supposed to prevent the epoxy from actually sticking to the keel. The second landing would be done using the regular polyurethane schmoo. After some pushing around, 9 out of 10 bolts were in. I think so. A wydaje mi się, że najpierw w przód. The only one still putting up resistance was, of course, the one in the new bilge box. Could it be that our measurements were not precise enough? As there's no actual footage, here's an approximation of how the next couple of minutes looked and felt. Contact and capture, docking confirmed. Fortunately, while rounding the boat, Bartek realized that the keel was tilted a bit and when the boat's angle was adjusted to match, the last bolt slid right into place okay. without drilling. After that, it was a frenzy of mixing and applying the epoxy paste. First landing was officially complete. We wanted to give the epoxy a couple of days to cure properly. In the meantime, we took care of other things, like sanding. Clearing the way for the shaft. And putting in the stern tube. Dry fitting all the keel bolt back plates.
and we encapsulated the lead ballast next to the mast in a couple of layers of fiberglass. Did I mention sanding? There was a lot of sanding. Once the paste had enough time to fully cure, it was time for the polyurethane schmoo, uh, 5200 to be exact. We did spend quite a lot of time scraping off the blue masking tape. Using packing tape would be safer. We were overtaken by probably irrational fear that Oish will not fit back on the keel for the second time. So we didn't lift her completely off the bolts, but just enough to apply the 5200. We were happy to see quite a substantial squeeze out all around. All that was left to do was a bit of reshuffling. she was settled again, we could celebrate achievement unlocked and think about proceeding to more mundane stuff. Mm -hmm. 